Hi everyone, I want to welcome you to my channel. So in this video, I am going to talk about the importance of setting healthy boundaries and the guilt that we associate to setting healthy boundaries. You know, where does that stem from? Uh, why are we like that? How can we see that there are other people out there that know exactly when to say no, don't have a problem with it because obviously people are doing it to you. Here you are struggling to set healthy boundaries, but when you, you know, want something, ask for something or whatever, whatever, people don't have a problem with setting that line or that boundary with you and on one level you're disappointed because you're not getting the same in return but then on the other hand you have you know they have something that you wish you did right so let's get to it so setting healthy boundaries was probably something that you found a lot easier to do when you reflect back to your childhood because it's really natural. If you don't want to do something, you would just say no when you were very young. If there was something that made you feel awkward or whatever, or that people were pushing your limits as a kid, no was no. And you didn't have to make any excuse about it. You know, you just said no. So what is it that happened to us from childhood into adulthood that we started to feel like uh, we wanted to be people pleasers. Did we just want to be people pleasers? Well, and there are a couple of different reasons as to why that happens. Sometimes some of us that grow up in a troubled home will say yes because they want to keep the peace. So if you grew up in a home where there were a lot of arguments and troubles going on all the time or very often then you'll do whatever you can to keep the peace you know if mom doesn't want to do it and dad what doesn't want to do it and if mom and dad don't want to do it maybe i can just do it and there'll be less trouble and the job will get done i mean does it really matter who does it or is it about the task well, at the end of the day, when you come from a troubled uh, uh, family that had a lot of arguments and trouble in the home, it was usually about who's going to do it. It was never really about the task, but that's not what you understood when you were a kid. It was not so much about getting stuff done. Like I said, it was about keeping the peace, doing whatever you could do uh, to make less to have less trouble, okay? So that that's what happened. Another reason why it can happen, especially in a romantic relationship, but usually it does stem from the family, and we do drag that into our romantic lives as well. And we do it for exactly the same reason. You know, maybe if I say no, the relationship is going to end. Maybe it means an argument will start up. Maybe I should just keep my mouth shut. And uh, if I keep my mouth shut, there's going to be no trouble. If I keep my mouth shut, uh, the, the person that I'm involved with is not going to leave. And then you just end up walking on eggshells all the time. And you're going to take this with you wherever you go in any kind of relationship because, and I mean friends, family, romantic partners, in the job, uh, all over the place. That It just goes with you because it's become a part of who you are. It has become your identity, probably not inside, but this is how you're being perceived now by others. If I want something, if I need something, I'm going to call so-and-so because so-and-so always has said yes, okay? And then you end up dropping whatever you're doing to be there for someone else. Now, 
With that being said, I am not sitting here and telling you that you shouldn't do nice things for people, but there is a healthy way to do it. And that's why the uh, key word here is healthy, setting healthy boundaries. So a healthy boundary is if you've got something to do, or if you don't want to do what someone's asking you to do, or you have something else to do for you, and you say no to somebody, that's a healthy boundary, okay? Now what's going to happen is initially, when you start setting these new boundaries, you're going to start becoming like a new you. And people are not adjusted to this person that you're becoming and uh, they're going to think to themselves that maybe you're upset or angry or whatever so when you do say you know no you have to have a really good tone about it you don't need to give an explanation as to why you're saying no it's not going to be necessary to do that you know it, you could just you ju it's just no okay the answer is no and uh, as a result of that I think what a lot of people don't understand is when we set healthy boundaries we are saving relationships because it doesn't only matter what other people think about you okay it also matters what you think about other people now let's say there's someone that you love that keeps crossing your line all the time. What you're going to end up doing at that point is building up a mountain of resentment and anger or frustration towards a person that you care for, that you love. And now you have so much anger and so much frustration because this person kept crossing your lines and taking advantage of your time you no longer like this person anymore and the other person doesn't really understand what they're doing wrong anymore I mean you were you've always been so nice and accommodating it seemed like you wanted to do these things okay so you start to change after a while how you feel about the person when had you set a healthy boundary that might not have happened okay so you're learning they're learning and then everybody's happy anybody who doesn't want to be with you as a result of you setting healthy boundaries do you really want people like that in your life I, I know like when you were a kid and there was trouble going on in the house and you thought to yourself, well, I'll do the dishes so there's no fight about who's going to do the dishes. It's understandable. It's common sense, really, when you were young and a kid. But now you're an adult. And that's another issue that we face as people a lot. And I'll, I'll get into that in a moment. No, but now you're an adult and you know better. So for you to keep doing the same kind of thing when you were 10 is not applicable to these relationships that, you know, you had no choice with family. But when it comes to other people like friends and, and, and romantic partners and stuff like that, you don't have to be that person. That's not required of you. You're not making, are you really making peace in the long run or, or is in the long run and at the end of all of this, we're actually making trouble that we didn't, that wasn't our intention, but this is what's going to end up happening if we don't start setting healthy boundaries now. Now there could be, it doesn't always have to be family. It doesn't always have to be, you know, something associated to your childhood. This can even be something that's coming from somewhere even deeper, like a past life. It, it can really be like that. I don't know if you've ever heard of the book, Many Lives, Many Masters, but uh, I have that book here and I give it to people that 
that so that they can understand and it was a new york times bestseller by the way so that they can understand how past lives even work for example uh someone went through a past life regression and drowned in a previous life and always had like a fear of water or a fear of losing oxygen or their breath and would have like a panic disorder or an anxiety attack whenever you know something like that or they were in that kind of an environment and then after finding out what the reasoning behind that was the person was able to heal just from the information that can happen from just information alone once you know what the source is of the problems are and you know what the truth is about those problems you're able to free yourself from those problems it's a big deal you know knowledge is power I wanted to also talk about our growth being stumped as well which is another important thing to discuss it's true that so much stuff really does come from our childhood uh, as an example you know if you had a difficult childhood growing up and uh, your parents or whatever some people the the parents end up unconsciously flipping the script and the children take on the parental role because the parents are behaving like children which forces the child to behave like an adult and it, it, you know it just it's a cycle it's a crazy cycle when you really start to become aware and the reason that these cycles happen a lot of it has to do with spirituality as well like if there's a dark energy or something like that around this will really uh, stump us on some levels so when we get into a a disappointment or something goes wrong or something isn't right I mean whatever it is that's going on when we end up in a situation that we're dealing with hurt and pain a lot of time a lot of the times uh, we've got the inner child dealing with these issues and let's just say our inner child if we came from a difficult uh, family environment or whatever it was the child that was dealing with all this big trouble so now as an adult because the child in us was so used to dealing with the trouble this is the part of us that gets hurt this is the part of us that comes forward whenever there's an issue uh, a breakup a separation uh, you know if, if you put yourself in the adult mindset the woman or the man in you you're gonna be a lot better suited to handle the life disappointments than your inner child I hope you understand what it is <clears throat> that I'm trying to communicate to you over here so when we experience trauma as a kid back in the day or very young and uh, like I said we remember as an adult how we felt at the hurt how we felt at the disappointment which is probably very similar to the same hurt <clears throat> the same pain the same fight that you're going through as an adult if that's what's happening then that's how you know that it's the inner child in you dealing with adult problems okay and when the child inner child founds that finds themselves in a, an adult situation it's gonna feel very overwhelming very devastating and you're gonna want to run home and hide under the covers because that's what any normal child would do in an adult situation 
But when the adult is dealing with an adult situation, they are able to manage their emotions, okay? Maybe not perfectly, but definitely better than a 10-year-old or a 15-year-old would. They're able to manage their emotions. They're able to rationalize the situation better and, and process the information without getting devastated. I hope, I hope everyone that's listening to this understands that. So, you know, the inner child, when you, when you find yourself in that kind of predicament, what you need to do is put the inner child to rest. That child needs to rest and the man and the woman in you need to take over the show. That is absolutely necessary because now you're an adult, you're dealing with adult situations and you are better prepared at managing that and not your inner child. You have to recognize it in order for you to be able to do something about that. Okay? Because like I said, if you feel the same way that you did when you were young and you experienced a hurt and a disappointment when you were a child and this is how you're feeling now, it's not supposed to be that way. Things should have changed. Things should have evolved emotionally by now. But it was too much for you then. You were dealing with something that was overwhelming then because you were a kid and you're still feeling that sense of, of being overwhelmed, okay? And feeling victimized, basically. That was probably the truth at the time when it, when it started as a childhood, in your childhood, but that's not really the case anymore, okay? Th this is life. So whenever you're experiencing, like I said, in your life, something difficult or traumatizing, or it feels traumatizing, it might not be uh, like something like a breakup or something, something like that, just calm yourself. Breathe. Do a breathing exercise and get a grip on your emotions. And know at the end of the day, if it didn't work, it's probably for the best. Like I said before, in some scenarios, there is like interference, spiritual interference. And I talk a lot of, about that on my podcast so that you can be able to tell the difference. Like this is a spiritual problem and this is more like psychological. But I'll, I'll tell you one thing for, for the moment, for now. One of the ways to tell if it's in fact a spiritual problem is if you have done everything that you can logically to try to resolve whatever it is that's been troubling you and it's been years and you're still dealing with the same old, same old, you've got to take it to a spiritual place. And that, that, that again, opens up another door for us. A lot of us spend too much time in our heads, in our minds. And I'm sure you've all heard at one time or another, mind, body, and spirit. So what that means is that these three parts of us, and that's what we are, we are those three parts. We're a mind, which is separate from the body, which is separate from the spirit. We're, we're made of these three things. But they need to be in harmony. And they need to be balanced. And that's what chakra balancing is all about. That's what healing is all about. That's what all this spiritual stuff is all about. It's about healing and balancing and awareness because all of these things contribute to our mind, body, and spirit, okay? So uh, when you've exhausted everything, like I said, and you're still not seeing any changes, and you've even worked on, you know, changing who you are as a person to try to get a different result, and it's not changing anything, 
something is probably spiritually off. And this is the time that you are supposed to seek out spiritual help. But like I said, sometimes we can get too much in our heads and our spirituality is being neglected. For example, let's say it's you grew up going to church or you believe that prayer and church is a good thing, which by the way it is, and uh, you just don't do that anymore because you've been too wrapped up with thinking negative thoughts all day long instead and kind of driving yourself nuts and sometimes it just comes down to faith and prayer and hope and feeding yourself spiritually faith hope all good stuff okay and that that's what's needed you have to basically um and that's what it is you have to feed yourself spiritually that's what it's all about uh, you need to take good care of your body, take care of your spirit, nurture your spirit, and also your mind. You know, sometimes the mind can be uh, a really funny thing and end up working against us. But when what your mind is doing is not serving you, you have to recognize that and say to your own mind, literally, this is not serving me and and shut that up okay not doing some type of spiritual practice I'm not saying that you always have to go to church you don't a lot of people don't believe or believe in organized religion I believe in all things I'm not necessarily as religious as I am spiritual and a lot of people are kind of like that now so, I mean, whatever it is that you do believe in spiritually, whether you want to call it God or Allah or the universe or Muhammad or a higher power, it, whatever you call it is fine. But as long as you're practicing something that is feeding your spirit, like even reading spiritual books, burning candles, prayers like I said it's all strengthening the spirit and of course your body that's another challenging thing exercise eating right you've got to you know look after yourself you've got to love yourself and you have to understand something that your life yes you your life is a gift it's a gift that's what it is and your body, I believe very much the part that I've read in the Bible that says your body is your temple. So it's kind of like your body is a church. So regardless of what it is that we believe in spiritually, we all can respect that, you know, any religion really, we should. A lot of us don't, but we should have respect for other religious beliefs, spiritual beliefs. And uh, if our body is a temple, like I said, it's like a church. So you're not going to want to subject your body to bad things. You're not going to want to feed the church or the temple bad food, cigarettes, alcohol, drugs, okay? You're going to want to keep it strong. You're going to want to keep it healthy. If you want to strengthen your spirit, you're not going to neglect it. You're not going to ignore it. You're not going to make believe it doesn't exist and not nurture it. It's like a garden, our, our lives. It, it needs to be taken care of. And this puts us in a good mindset, in a good, balanced psyche basically puts us in a good place spiritually puts us in a good place physically and if we've got these things going for us what can possibly go against us you know if we're good with all of that 
You know what I mean? Uh, you're you're solid. You're like a rock. You're not you're not weak in any way, physically, mentally, or spiritually. So how can negative energies really penetrate if that's how you are? Some of us need help to get to the right place or to get to that place is what I mean to say. And that's okay. A lot of us also have trouble asking for help if they need it, but you shouldn't. You should not because you want to live your best life and the healthiest and spiritual and mentally health, healthy life as much as you possibly can and as soon as you can. So if there's a way for you to take a shortcut and get there, why would you let something like pride get in your way? That's not good pride, in my opinion. You know, if you need help, ask. Okay? So I hope this has helped to enlighten a lot of you. I would like you very, very much, because it all started, this video started with setting healthy boundaries. I would very much like for you to have a look at my blog, go to Psychic Reading Expert, psychicreadingexpert.com <laughs> and you'll see the blog click the link and you're going to ha get some information about healthy boundaries you're going to learn how to set healthy boundaries so you're going to get a lot of help there with this thing that I've written for you to follow so go ahead follow these instructions and namaste and I want to wish you all the very best of luck Thank you so much for being here.